So one of the best mobile video editors, LumaFusion, is now widely available on Android and Chrome OS, courtesy of an early access phase. So to understand if it's any good, we've gone hands-on to see how it holds up after bridging the iOS, Android and Chrome OS divide. So here's everything you need to know. One major piece of advice we have to share with you though before we properly dive in is that if you do want to try this out for yourself, be sure to buy LumaFusion on the Google Play Store. Firstly, this enables access on most Chrome OS devices alongside your Android phone. And there is also the added bonus of doing this will prevent any lock-in to the Galaxy Store with Samsung phones as LumaFusion is available over on the Galaxy Store too. And because your purchase is registered your Google account, it means that you will be able to access LumaFusion on your Android and Chrome OS devices without requiring a Samsung Galaxy phone, tablet, or even a Chromebook when the full version launches at some point later down the line. You're probably wondering why LumaFusion coming to Android and Chrome OS is a big deal at all. Well, this software package is the closest experience to the immensely popular Final Cut Pro that many Mac owners swear by and use for video editing purposes. It has been on iOS and iPad since 2016 and is often found at the top of the paid App Store charts. It really is truly a fantastic mobile video editing suite that deserves all of the plaudits it has received since it launched over six years ago. On Android, of course, we have plenty of editing apps, but in almost all cases, these tend to be trimmed down versions of many of their desktop counterparts. Adobe Premiere Rush is a prime example, as it's designed solely for simple edits. Of course, you can create great videos, but the toolset is streamlined and key functions are just missing entirely. It also requires a $9.99 per month subscription. It is, however, free as part of a Creative Cloud subscription fee, and that does have cloud syncing baked in, so you can use it across devices. Because Chrome OS, though, is predominantly browser-based, it has been limited to mobile-first editing applications, courtesy of that ability to run Android apps. Most of these, though, tend to be poorly optimized for the hardware, pose performance-related issues, and in some cases, a lock to portrait orientation. That's not ideal when you want to edit on a 16 by 9 screen and watch YouTube videos much like this one. LumaFusion offers a cross-platform solution that has been tested and tuned for both Android and Chrome OS now, courtesy of this early access release. And this is great news if you're hoping to try it out for yourself and simultaneously makes it easier to learn or utilize as the experience is practically identical on mobile, tablet, and Chrome OS. Far from a basic editor, you can fully tweak footage using middle, middle or even custom look, aka lookup tables, to create a style that's unique to your edits. I don't actually think the audio editing functionality is particularly in-depth, but keyframing and tuning is impressive as not a lot of video editing apps on Android and Chrome OS offer this. Chroma Key support also even offers rudimentary screen screen features, which is something that very few mobile editors can even boast. Storyblocks integration also makes it easy and affordable to access a deep library of stock videos, animated backgrounds, sound effects, and even backing music for your content. You don't have to pay for access to the service if you don't want to, as a small selection of freebies is included with services like Pexels, Unsplash, Chillhop, and more, also offering alternatives, free alternatives, that is, that you, means you don't have to pay for a subscription to make high quality content. It's a nice option, I think, though, that is directly integrated here into LumaFusion if you feel the need to add some role to free content, and it might be good for roving reporters and people like that who want access to all of those things that Storyblocks offers for a low fee. Another thing that I think is really important with LumaFusion and differentiates it from other applications out there is the ability to directly import media from services like Google Drive, which if you're a Google fan, that's a great thing, and OneDrive if you use Microsoft software. This means that so long as you have a good internet connection, you don't need to use things like external drives or even SD cards and content on those to add it to your timeline. I can foresee this being especially useful in scenarios where you need footage from another device but no cable to transfer it effectively, and I've used this myself throughout my testing period to see just how it works. You're probably wondering though, how is performance now that it's able to run on new devices? Well, I will say that it runs a lot better than I actually anticipated given the various connotations of Android and Chrome OS hardware. I will say that when using Chrome OS, creating proxy files is especially helpful when working with those larger, higher res files. But I did find that some sample 1080p and even 4K UHD video ran well on the Intel i3 powered HP Chrome base, which I have used throughout the period of this hands-on. 
things were handled impressively. There were small stutters and slowdowns here and there, but nothing that truly ruined the experience for me. Compared to my specially built editing workstation, which runs a Ryzen CPU and RTX graphics cards, these were definitely more pronounced here, but definitely not game breaking. When using a mouse in Chrome OS, I did find that this combined with touchscreen controls and that precise selection and capabilities that a mouse cursor brings was a really good combination. Being able to tap and tweak while scrolling and scrubbing is something I'd actually love to see in Adobe packages like Premiere Pro. That said, there definitely needs to be some tuning for the mouse and keyboard, or at least mouse and keyboard users. At present, it's passable, but not perfect. It's harder to suggest for those with non-touchscreen capable Chromebooks, because of that, but that said, you still can use it. It just takes a little bit of time to get used to the actual gestures that you'll need to use with your mouse to access certain features and drag and drop things to your timeline. And Android though, I have to say it's superb and just like I've experienced on iOS, and you can tell that LumaFusion was initially developed for a mobile and then ported over to a tablet form factor. Every control surrounding the main timeline view is tailored to stay out of sight and not truly hinder that process of building or crafting a video timeline. As someone that certainly prefers editing on a desktop or laptop, I'm blown away with what you can achieve when using a mobile application such as this. And I must admit timeline scrubbing of 4K and 1080p footage is incredibly slick on the Pixel 7 Pro, the Galaxy S22 Ultra, although I will say I have noticed a few dropped frames here and there, but I didn't find this distracting or even disappointing. LumaFusion is still in early access after all. It does though run a lot better than I had anticipated going into this hands-on. Phones that have access to a stylus though, like the Galaxy S22 Ultra, let you get truly precise with the touchscreen capabilities here too, although I've not tested this software on the Galaxy Z Fold lineup, I think it would be right at home there, particularly as you can just fold in and out with that larger display. Trimming video clips to size is just much more accurate with a stylus, and with the Pixel tablet due at some point in 2023 with its stylus support expected, I think that might be a perfect combination there. Two. When talking about render times though, things get a little bit interesting. On a modest Chrome OS device, this one being powered by an i3 processor, a timeline with a few transitions, no real color effects, and a maximum length of around three minutes, it took around a minute or so to render at 1080p resolution. The Pixel 7 Pro offered similarly solid times for video renders, an almost three minute timeline that consisted of all of the same clips was done within one minute. What was interesting though is that in both instances, rendering out of 4K added just a few seconds to that total render time. Of course, when you start to add multiple effects, backing tracks, titles, add tra transformative edits and even transition to eclipse, the render times do start to increase quite dramatically. When attempting similar edits though with the Fum LumaFusion app on iOS on the iPad from 2020 specifically, it even offers faster times, but not dramatically so I will say. The optimization done here to ensure that Android and the Chrome OS versions of this app are within touching distance of Apple's platforms though is very commendable indeed. So something I've kind of found out while testing out the render times on the iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the Pixel 7 Pro is that when you try to render out at 4K resolution and slightly higher, the Tensei G2 processor seems to fly through and absolutely smoke the iPhone. That's not the case at 1080p output, but if you're rendering out at 4K resolution, the Tensei G2 on the Pixel 7 Pro seems to do a hell of a lot better than the iPhone series at this point in time. I've not tested it extensively, but the five or six times that I rendered out, the iPhone is actually losing at 4K resolution, but that's just something to note that I found out through testing this throughout making this video, but that's uh, kind of an interesting aspect to this, um, to LumaFusion on Android especially. One frustration I have noticed is the apparent lack of support for the .mov file format, a format that I use quite regularly. It simply does not seem to work on Chrome OS or Android, at least at this point in time. I also found that certain HDR and even some high frame rate video would also pose problems. That said, when linking to my Google Drive account directly, 120 FPS MP4 videos were imported without issue. So I don't know if that's a problem with this early build or just a problem with the files I was trying to import. You may just need to check or test footage recorded at high resolutions for compatibility first before trying to really delve into an edit. This is an annoyance for serious videographers as you may need to convert video files before they become usable in LumaFusion and we will reach out to them for some clarity on this and we will leave a response down below in the comment section if they do get back to us. I do think 
for me, this is going to be a real roadblock, and for many out there, and it is important for you to know. To summarize this entire hands-on, I will say that LumaFusion for Android is a nice addition. I'm sure that Android video editors will absolutely love it. Where I think it really becomes a valuable tool is over on Chrome OS though. And Chrome OS users out there will know that the platform has really lacked a solid video editing suite since its launch. And I think LumaFusion offers that without monthly fees or missing features. Although it is a mobile application, it works very much like a desktop editing package rather than being a piece of software shoehorned into a mobile form factor. You don't need masses of under the hood grunt for it to run well. And the basic projects or at least basic projects that you want to edit are now within reach for Chrome OS users. For those wanting a full featured Android editing suite, it's similarly impressive and bests Adobe Rush, which I think was the best editing package until this point, and many of the other catch up or those playing catch up to Adobe. The value of a one-off payment with future updates guaranteed is also something that I think elevates LumaFusion above many of those subscription-based alternatives, particularly from those bigger brands. What's more, on iPad and iOS, file management is genuinely atrocious. Android and Chrome OS really handle file management a lot better. When in a project, you're able to find video, image, and audio content much faster, and managing files just becomes less cumbersome because of the way Android is set up. Professional editors definitely won't jump ship over to LumaFusion full time, and I think that was always going to be the case. I would be incredibly surprised if someone were to even ditch a Windows or Mac OS machine in favor of Chrome OS now that LumaFusion is available, but there is an option there if you do want it. I will say though, for first time video editors or even just quick edits on the go, LumaFusion is a super option and alternative for you. While it's still technically in this early access or beta phase on Android and Chrome OS, it's shown me that it really already is the best video editing option out there. Hopefully with some more tuning and tweaks before the stable launch though, we'll see even greater parity between the experience on iOS and Google's platforms later down the line. For me, accessibility is often a roadblock for people getting into video editing in the first place. When smartphone cameras are improving at such an accelerated rate, being able to edit a video fully on your phone or with desktop level controls on your device is a great tool to have access to. I can foresee even more people creating content online with an even lower barrier of entry even though this is priced at $19.99. I will say it's not a cheap application for Android or Chrome OS at all. But it is a premium package and one that luckily doesn't feel overpriced and I don't think it does from my position. In fact, I think it offers great value if you want a multi-device editing suite that is a breeze to pick up and use and is well worth a look. I want to know though, have you tried this out for yourself? Let me know if you've had a go with LumaFusion down in the comment sections below. It's always interesting to hear what you think. But as always, until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google. Thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.